first grade. I'm glad to see you this morning. So I'm coming straight to you from the Deke STEM Lab and today we're going to um, talk about what you were getting ready to work on or maybe you had just started when you were in the lab last. We, I think you were probably starting to talk about animals and their body parts and maybe even some of the parts of plants and why those are important for their survival. For instance, what part of this animal would be important for its survival? How would it breathe? How would it eat? Can it hear? How does it move? How does it keep warm or cold? These are all good questions, correct? I wonder if you have any answers. So, how does a fish move in the water? What's important for it to move in the water? Well, obviously, how it moves its body and how it uses the different parts of its body, such as its different types of fins. Now, all fish do not have the exact same amount of fins or the same shape. Different fish, depending on what kind they are and where they might be in the water, have different kinds of fins. Think of a whale, for instance. I'd like you to look one up online if you can, or maybe in a book at home, and see if you can see how a whale looks different than this particular fish. I wonder, could you draw a picture of the two and use some labels? Send it to your teacher in your Google Docs and your Google Classroom and see if you can explain to her the difference between this type of fish and a whale. Now, there are other animals, obviously, not just fish. What about a bird? What does a bird have that helps it to survive? Why is it different? Does it have scales? Does it have fins? Hmm, interesting. Birds are a little different, right? So birds have beaks. They have wings. They have a tail fish had a tail. They have feathers. Did the fish have feathers? Hmm. No. I think we called those, that's right, scales. Fish have scales. Birds have feathers. And the way that their wings and their feathers are shaped are what help them to fly. Now, fish have something else that or birds have something else that fish don't have. And you don't see them on this bird, but bird has, birds have feet, right? That way they can stand. I have a question for you. Fish live in water. Where do birds live? Can birds go in water? If you have some answers to these questions, write them down in Google Docs and upload them to your teacher's classroom. I'm sure she'd be interesting to, interested to hear what you have to say. I have one more critter I want to share with you. A turtle. Now this is just a regular turtle shell. This turtle isn't in his shell anymore. But what's different about this creature? There's no feathers here. There are scales on the back. And in fact, if you look at this old turtle, you can see that, and this is what turtles do, it was actually getting ready to shed an old scale and underneath is the pretty new one. That's because it was growing. As turtles grow, they will lose their scales that they have on their hard bodies. Okay, this critter is a little different. This is a turtle shell. And I have a turtle shell and I have a tortoise shell. Now, obviously, these aren't still alive. These are just the shells. But how are these different and how they protect the animal that lives inside of them? Well, obviously, there's no feathers here. And they're pretty hard. These are designed to do something very specific for the turtle like when he's afraid or when 
something's coming to get him or a predator that might want to eat him. What can a turtle do with these to protect himself? Hmm, what do you think he can do? Something interesting with a turtle shell that is somewhat like a fish is that they have scales. Now you can see the pattern of scales on the back of this turtle and you can see the pattern on the underside of the shell as well. On this particular turtle, which I believe was probably a red-eared slider, you can see them because this turtle was growing some and the scales were starting to come off. Now turtles will lose these scales as they grow and that's why that one you can see right there is loose and underneath is the nice new scale. I'd be interested to know and what other creatures you know of, um, whether they live in the water or they live in the land or they live in the air, what kinds of things make them special and what do they need in order to survive? I mean obviously what a fish needs to survive and what a bird needs to survive are very different. Now here's something else to think about. We talked about living things, but we didn't talk about all living things. Now, what I have here is a plant. Oops. This plant. And this plant has leaves. And down here, you can see the stem. And on the bottom of the stem, you can see roots. This plant gets its nutrients from the roots. The nutrients go into the roots, up through the stem, and out to keep the leaves healthy and the plant growing taller and taller. What would happen if this plant, which likes to live where it's warm and sunny, was put somewhere where it was cold and dark? Hmm. That's a good question for you to post into your Google Docs. Make sure you answer these questions and let your teachers know your answers. We're really excited to hear from you. And in the meantime, remember, wash your hands, don't touch your face. We'll see you real soon back here in the STEM lab. Have a great day.